Welcome everybody to the 14th Wi-Fi 6 tutorial from Optoscope. Today we will be discussing traffic generation in relation to Wi-Fi testing and we'll be we'll be covering multi-perf uh, Optoscope's traffic generator in quite a bit of detail. My name is uh, Jan Linkola. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing here at Optoscope and actually now at Spirant since uh, Optoscope was acquired in March. I've spent most of my career at various kinds of roles at operators, um, usually something to do with Wi-Fi, uh, although I started my career in cellular. Most recently, I worked for, uh, for AirTies, uh, one of the leading consumer mesh vendors in the space. I'm joined uh, today by two colleagues. Steve Shearer is the chief scientist here uh, at Octoscope. He has just a, a really extensive um, background in the telecommunications industry. He worked for Philips in the terrestrial radio systems area for, for many, many years, uh, working on systems like GSM, TDMA, CDMA. Uh, was involved in various kinds of R&D and standard activities. Um, we hired Steve from Wi-Fi Alliance, where he led, um, you know, some LTE and Wi-Fi coexistence activities. He knows Wi-Fi technology really well due to his background in Wi-Fi Alliance and is also very well versed in, in, in uh, uh, RF uh, area, really my uh, go-to uh, guy in, in that space. All the demos uh, in this tutorial are performed by Nandini Venkat Raman. She, I would say, is probably uh, one of the few top leading experts as far as the Octobox test bed is concerned. She really knows it in and out. And she's gained this uh, experience through performing testing here at the at Octoscope. She's been doing it for five years. She's led the, the methodology, the test cases, test script development. She finds most of the bugs and uh, and is a really uh, busy person. So uh, we're um, quite happy to, to have both of uh, Steve and Nandini uh, today in this tutorial. As I mentioned, we'll be covering traffic generation. Uh, so here's a a few uh, features that you really want to look for when you're um, when you're shopping for our testing systems. Uh, you want a, a system that is capable of doing multi-point to multi-point traffic generation. Why? Well, because real world is multi-point to multi-point. In order to troubleshoot any kind of issues that you find, you need a lot of statistics, metrics, tools to help you in, in troubleshooting. Multiperf has an out-of-band management capability, and this is a really uh, cool feature because it allows uh, an interactive way to use the test bed where you, see, where you can perform the test and see immediately the results. A lot of systems out there are sort of, you know, the system goes blank for 10 minutes and then you see the results and, you know, important thing happened five seconds into the, uh, the test and you lost a lot of time. You want a system that um, is able to recover from link disconnections. Why? Well, because they're quite a common occurrence in, in the testing scenarios that we run. Of course, timing uh, is important for things like one-way delay measurements. And you know, if you're doing uh, sniffer captures, you wanna make sure that the, the time is captured correctly. You, of course, most test beds have various kinds of traffic emulation capabilities, but you also are going to want to find a system that is able to bridge real traffic into that test bed. And of course, uh, it's important to find a system that has uh, a lot of coverage in different kinds of devices on the test. So uh, the test uh, client is, is ported into various operating systems. And, and of course, if you can interoperate uh, tools like iperf it's, uh, it's even better so uh, with that let's go um, uh, kind of uh, each area in detail and how uh, multiperf facilitates this I already uh, talked about the multipoint to multipoint capability this is of course um, how the real world works you might have 
you know, a home where one person is uh, browsing the internet while another person is printing something on a printer, maybe uh, accessing something on a, on a file server in case of a, of a, let's say, an office or an enterprise application, especially in networks where there are multiple nodes, you know, for example, mesh networks. This is actually a, an important area of the optimization. How do the traffic flows exactly get mapped? into various nodes, you know, how load balancing works, you know, back haul, front haul. You want to make sure that the traffic, on the traffic generation side, you're able to emulate uh, what would happen in the real world. And the reason I'm emphasizing uh, this is that a lot of systems don't do this. Um, you know, due to various test instruments constraints, we often see uh, uh, systems that can only do point to multipoint uh, systems. And of course, in, uh, in the Octobox test beds, everything has been uh, designed from the ground up with, uh, with multipoint to multipoint in mind. As I mentioned, we have Nandini here for all the demos. We'll be doing a lot of demos today. They are all going to be done with this test bed here. It's called the Stack Max. It is Octoscope's most fully featured test bed. As you can see, there are five chambers in the system, uh, you know, the five uh, open doors here. Four of them have space uh, for you to put uh, devices on the test, whether that's access points, mesh networks, or bones, or what have you. Uh, one of the chambers here, called the PAL box, is, is full of um, test instruments. As you'll see, um, this is another way to view that, uh, that same test bed. Again, we have uh, these five blue squares here representing the, the five chambers that I talked about. This square here is the PAL box. You'll see that um, what I've done here is, is, is I've highlighted with red color all the test instruments that are embedded uh, in the test bed. And as you'll see, they're in every chamber uh, in the test bed. So you'll be able to involve any of these uh, instruments in a number of different traffic flows. So it's really quite uh, capable to facilitate almost any kind of uh, traffic flow scenario you have in mind. You'll notice that there, uh, the test instruments have two different names. There's something called the PAL-6E. This is a test instrument uh, built on the Qualcomm Hawkeye Pine platform. And it is capable of emulating both access points and stations. We also have instruments called Staypals. These are built on the Intel AX210 platform and are able uh, to do uh, station emulation. So with that introduction, let's go to the first uh, demo. Here is uh, Nandin, and she'll show you uh, some multi-point to multi-point demonstrations. Um, Yanni mentioned that I will be using the Stack Max for a lot of my demos. This is a photo of the Stack Max. It's got the embedded devices in each chamber here, here, and here. And this is the PAL box that has 16 state PAL devices. I'm gonna be using some of these devices in my demo going forward. So the first capability I'm going to show is the multi-point to multi-point traffic generation capability of MultiPerf. I have, uh, I'm going to set up two traffic pairs. So my first traffic pair, I'm going to set up this PAL6E as an access point. PAL6 devices are configurable devices, so you can configure them as um, APs, stations, sniffers, inline sniffers, they can also support virtual stations up to 64 per radio. So um, the first traffic pair is going to be a PAL6E set up as an AP, and I'm going to run traffic to an Android phone, um, which is running our latest Android MultiPerf. The second pair is going to be an ASUS AP that's in the box 38 chamber. It's going to be uh, part of a link with one of the state pals that's in the pal box. I'm going to run 
traffic to the first traffic pair first and then introduce the second one to show some interesting capability that multipoint to multipoint can help you with. So this is our new software release. I'm going to introduce this before I start my demos. So on the left hand side, you have configuration for all of your devices. We have all our attenuators here. We have our MPEs, multipath emulators here. We have the turntable here. Uh, we have our traffic traffic pair configuration here. There's two modes. We have dashboard mode and auto test mode. Dashboard mode is a mode where you can control the attenuators and the turntables and play around with everything in the system. And once you have everything set up the way you want to, you're getting max throughput and everything, you can save it as an auto test. So you can save it as an RBR test or um, RVR, RVOVR test, which will give you our polar plots. We also have sniffer configuration here, so you can start and stop sniffers. I have two sniffer probes here, so I'm going to be showing that demo a little bit later. And you have our instrument configuration as well. So uh, all our PAL 6s and our state PALs can be configured from this panel here going back to dashboard and then in the middle of the screen you have the graphs so you've got uh, the status of all the attenuators in the system up top and you've got statistics real-time statistics coming from all the PAL devices they report their own statistics so there's a bunch of statistics that you can pick and choose from reported by the chipset and you can have graphs on either side of the screen and you can enable disable based on uh, what you want to see on your screen. On the right hand side, we have status for all the devices. So uh, you can see which ones are up and associated. You can also use that this as a legend for the plot. So you can turn off and turn on statistics for the device that you want to see on the plot. The statistics for each device matches the color of the of the endpoint that you see on the right hand side. So for the first demo, I'm going to turn off the devices that I don't need here. But I'm going to start traffic between the PAL 6 AP and the Android phone. So you've got traffic going there from the PAL 6 AP to the Android phone. The traffic, you can see the statistics coming from, from the PAL AP, um, reporting its MCS data rates and bandwidth. Now you can see about like 500 to 600 11 AC traffic coming from the phone. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, going to introduce the second pair, which is on the same channel. So it's going to throttle this traffic and we'll, we'll see how the phone handles, handles that. So that's my second traffic pair. That's going to introduce uh, my 11AX staple device. And um, you can see the effects of contention here. So you see that the traffic to the phone has almost dropped off. You, um, the traffic here takes the color of the receiver endpoint. So you see the blue traffic comes from the phone. And the traffic to the state path throttles the phone traffic and the traffic to the phone drops off. If we wait a little while, we'll start to see the traffic to the phone slowly recover. You can see that it's kind of nudging along and uh, doing some trickle traffic which takes away from the traffic. So some interesting effects of contention in the air link. And you can actually see all of this data on the screen with throughput and statistics together because of multiperf, because you're able to run multipoint to multipoint traffic using multiperf. Thank you, Nandini. So uh, as you already saw, um, the Octobox 
UI, the new, especially the new software UI that uh, that Nandini was demoing there, uh, offers quite a bit of um, uh, tools uh, for uh, troubleshooting uh, your test cases, and that's really important. You know, obviously, in the case where you're not getting the result that you might be expecting, in Wi-Fi, the user experience is the end, re end result of the interaction of a lot of adaptive parameters in Wi-Fi. There's quite a bit going on there, and so it's important to have tools uh, to analyze uh, what's going on. And the, the multiperf tool offers quite a bit of these tools. First on the application emulation layer, you know, layer three uh, through seven, uh, multiperf itself is able to give you uh, various kinds of statistics, you know, things like, I don't know, throughput, delay, jitter, packets lost, packets resent, that sort of stuff. If you involve the PAL test instruments that we talked about earlier, then you'll be able to see Wi-Fi layer one and layer two statistics, these things here on the right, you know, for further understanding of what's happening in the Wi-Fi layer. And of course, the test bit also uh, uh, enables packet capture, wireless packet capture uh, through a feature that, uh, that we're gonna talk a lot more in the, in, in later on, but we, we call it sinker sniffing. So now you see all the packets, and that's really the ultimate troubleshooting experience. Uh, I should mention a, a feature that, uh, that we have uh, coming up later this year based on the packet capture. We're currently developing a feature where we are essentially recreating these layer one, uh, layer two stats based on packet captures. And what that allows you is you no longer have to have an octoscope PAL test instrument as a as a traffic endpoint. Uh, you can, for example, have uh, I don't know uh, an iPhone against uh, you know some off the shelf access point, maybe an access point that you're testing. And as long as you involve a test instrument to sniff the packets, then then we'll be able to give you these statistics. The same feature will allow a really cool user experience that we call cross probing which is, um, imagine this being, uh, this image here in the left being the, the plots that uh, have been recreated using the sniffer capture capability that I just talked about. And let's just say you're interested in this area where a lot of these parameters are sort of dropping quite dramatically. You'll be able to double click uh, any of these plots at a, at a particular point of interest. And the user interface of the, the ser server software will take you into the packet capture to that point uh, in time, you know, where you can do further troubleshooting. And of course, you're, you're, you're able to come back to this UI, back and forth. You know, so this will be available in, in fourth quarter. It looks like there might be a question. Uh, in the diagram, was there a signaling tester or non-signaling tester? And if it's the latter, what dependencies are there for an A put or STAUT, which is a QC and Intel likely provided DLLs, but custom DUTs may not? Let, let me try to take that one, guys. So yeah. our system is signaling. It's all signaling. It's, it's uh, really running the test through either your device under test, which we expect is signaling, or endpoints could be our instruments pals. They can be your stations or they can be, when they are an access point, usually the endpoint is bridged to our server on the internet. So you run through the access point of the bridge. So it's all signaling. So having said that, you can, we have customers that are in the early stages of chipset design that will not have signaling implemented. They have usually test modes. They can generate their own traffic on their own dot. And we have some tools, like we've got triathlon that's married to the light point to help you evaluate that. I hope that's helpful. Uh, you know, if, if not, feel free to speak up and, and we can discuss. But for, for the time being, just assume everything here is signaling. Uh, let's go to our uh, next demo. Here's uh, Nandini again to show you um, some uh, throughput analysis uh, on the testbed. So 
for the second demo, I'm going to be using a station that's in the PAL box, one of the 16 stations that, that's in the PAL box. And I'm going to be running traffic to the AP that's inside the box 38 chamber. Now, I'm also going to introduce some variations um, using the attenuator, the multipath emulator, and the turntable. So with the attenuator, I'm going to increase the attenuation. So we'll, cha we'll see changes in RSSI and we'll see how that affects throughput and the underlying statistics. And with the multipath emulator, I'm gonna be introducing multipath in, in the link. So we can see how that affects it as well. And then towards the end, I have a fun demo with orientation with the turntable. So going back to the software, I'm going to be running traffic between the AP and the staple that's inside that's inside the box 38 chamber. I'm going to hit start there. We see about 1800 megabit per second coming from the staple um, from the ACP to the staple. This is 11 AX. Uh, two by two, uh, we have 160 megahertz bandwidth, MCS 11. Everything's at max, max rates, max throughput right now. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to introduce some attenuation here using the attenuator that's available in the MPE. So you see the status of the attenuation coming up. And you see the corresponding dip in throughput. Now, because there's a throughput dip, you'll start to wonder why, and you can see the reason why. So there's a 20 dB drop in RSSI, and there's also a corresponding adaptation behavior seen in MCS. Bandwidth is still holding steady at 160 megahertz um, because it has dropped MCS to adapt to the new signal levels. Now I'm going to introduce multipath. So I'm just going to introduce the multipath element by turning that switch on. So you see that because I introduced multipath, there is a further RSSI drop. There's a throughput drop, MCS drops, and now bandwidth has given up and dropped to 80 megahertz on, on the TX side. So you can actually turn off TX and RX to see which one actually adapted down. So that was TX rates adapting down. But what I can also do is I can go back. So I'm going to turn off the switch and go back and remove the multipath. So you can see if things adapt back up to the original levels. And I can also set my attenuators back to zero dB. You see that they've gone back to zero. Now things are back up to max, max rates and max throughput. But you can see here that you know, while adapting back up, MCS chose to stay at MCS 9 in one direction for a while before it came back up to MCS 11. So this is the kind of adaptation behavior that you can see uh, using the statistics that are reported, as well as using the Octobox testbed to control the attenuators and the multipath emulators. Another thing that we have is the turntable. So on this system here, we, I have the AP sitting on top of a turntable. So I'm going to turn the turntable for this demo and we'll see the effects of rotation on throughput. So uh, I'm just going to turn very slowly. So you see the turntable turning and um, you see the effects of rotation on throughput. And you can also see why throughput is dropping. There's their MCS drops and there are variations in RSSI caused by rotation. So the turntable is going back and forth. And you can see the changes in all the statistics caused by changes in orientation for the device under test. Thank you, Nandini. Looks like there's a there's a couple questions here uh, before we continue. Um, 
The first question uh, came from Matt. He's asking, shouldn't multipath path improve uh, throughput rather than reduce as we, we saw in Nandini's demo? I think the, um, I mean, um, Fanny and Steve uh, and, and, and Nandini, feel free to jump in as well. But I think the, I think the short answer is that we, yes, multipath would give you multiple paths. And so MIMO, of course, requires multiple paths in order to operate. So if you're in a situation where um, you don't have enough paths, then multipath could potentially uh, improve it. However, in, in that particular case that Nandini was running, mm -hmm. We already had uh, multiple paths uh, in there, so uh, we didn't get any any path improvement uh, from the emulator. Instead, we got the other impacts, which uh, have to do with you know s signal summing in in weird ways, and so we we effectively saw uh, an MCS adaptation behavior. Um, yeah, that's actually a good answer. I would maybe just add to it. Uh, so multipath as there aspects of multipath, which are directionality. So when the signal comes from diverse directions, that improves your throughput. MIMO requires that if all your signals come from one direction, they will be a single C. To get multiple MIMO streams, they have to be spatially diverse. And so in the, in let's say in a house, you have signals reflecting of walls coming into the, one side of the device and into the opposite side that that helps the multiple MIMO antennas pick up different streams and, and resolve the signal into multiple streams and, and, and gives you spatial multiplex. That's just directionality. Uh, now, multipath also has nulls. So when you have these reflections, you may have standing waves. When you have standing waves, they cancel each other and you get a null. And so if you look at multipath signal, you get these sharp, deep nulls versus frequency, at the frequencies where you have reson, when you have that uh, resonance um, with the reflections, depending on how and it's sounding. So the, the nulls in the signal and the directionality are caused by reflections. So what I think, Yanni, you're saying we already have spatially diverse signals and that comes from the way we hang antennas around the device. So we have that spatial diversity. To it, we can add the nulls using our multipath emulator or MPE to create this realistic multipath. Uh, but the nulls never help you. <laughs> I mean, they almost never help you because they take <laughs> away your power. The, so the spatial diversity of multipath helps you, but the nulls hurt you. And so that's what the, you are seeing in this demo, the impact of those nulls alone, not of spatial diversity. I hope this makes sense. I, I think it was an excellent answer. All right. Um, very good. Matt uh, continues here. Uh, what about latency? Any changes uh, in how you measure latency in the new system? Yes, absolutely. Yes, we, uh, we're we going to talk about that actually later on. But uh, sneak preview, there's um, now an ability to measure one-way latency, whereas uh, um, we could only do round-trip latency uh, until now. Let's move on. So um, something I want to talk about. Um, so we, we've seen now a couple demos already. Nandini is showing, you know, she, she's manipulating all the dials, you know, the, the traffic is impacted by, you know, how, how she controls the test bed. We're seeing all this rich visualization on the screen. The cool thing I want to really emphasize is that we can do all that visualization without impacting the measurement itself. The measurement and the control and reporting on the measurement are fully separated in the Octobox test beds. We do that, we, we essentially have multiple uh, 10 gigabit uh, backbone ethernet networks there. One is dedicated purely for the traffic, as I said. There's another one uh, where all the control, uh, orchestration, starting of flows, stopping of flows, reporting on uh, all those statistics. Also, uh, any sniffing is, is happening in this network that we call the management network. In, in fact, there is also a third network for access accessing 
the test bed from the outside with a web browser. So the fact that we're sh seeing, um, you know, the web browser UI, that doesn't impact the measurement uh, either. All right, but anyway, uh, let's talk about disconnections. These are a very uh, common occurrence in wireless testing. In fact, they are kind of the point of a lot of different kinds of tests that we uh, end up performing. We, we oftentimes are interested in um, some behavior, some adaptation, as we increase the distance from the access point. And often those tests are ran until you actually uh, uh, get a disconnect. You know, we're, we're interested in finding where that point of disconnection is and that um, user experience adaptation behavior until the point of disconnection. So, so that's like one way uh, that we see them. But of course, there's also, you know, things like handovers, uh, either between two access points or, or maybe we're, um, you know, looking at a handover between, uh, you know, Wi-Fi and cellular connection. And of course, these handover areas uh, and events are, are an area of, of, of optimization in our industry. So of course, we need uh, tools that, that can characterize and, and survive these disconnections. Multiperf recovers uh, from these using the mechanism that I just described, right? There's, there's two uh, backbone networks. So even if we lose connectivity on the traffic network side, because we're, we've emulated a very long distance uh, in between two nodes, we still have an always on management connection, monitoring the status of all those test instruments and devices. And so the moment we recognize that the physical uh, connectivity is regained, we can then automatically reestablish all the relevant traffic flows um, that uh, were in place. All right, let's talk a little bit about timing. It's of course is another uh, super important thing, especially in a test bed like the Octobox, which has all these different chambers and test instruments here and there. And, and so we wanna make sure that, uh, that we're getting all this reporting, all these uh, sniffer captures from a single time domain. Why? Well, you know, the user experience is often quite sensitive to uh, little differences in timing. So we wanna make sure that we capture it correctly. And so we can correlate events, you know, what happened before, what after, and, and things of that sort. And of course, we're achieving that uh, in the Octobox test beds uh, through precision time protocol that we run in that management network um, that I was, uh, I was talking about. Let's uh, go to another demo here. Uh, Nandini has uh, prepared a, a handover demo for us. All right. So Yanni was just talking about disconnections, and I think the best way to show a disconnection test is a handover test or roaming test. So to do this demo, I'm going to set up this PAL6C that's in the PAL box as AP1, and I'm going to use the second PAL6C that's in the smart box here as AP2. Both of these PALs have attenuators to them. So there's an attenuator here and there's attenuators inside the multipath emulator. I'm gonna be controlling both of these attenuators to cause this station to roam between AP1 and AP2. This station is an Android device. It's running our newest Android multiperf. So it's got the out of band management that Yanni was talking about. So that when the station loses connection, we use that management network to ping the device and pick back up when it connects to the next device. Now, another thing is uh, I mentioned earlier that the PALs can be inline sniffers as well. So I've set this uh, set up both of these PALs as AP inline sniffers. So we can actually look at the handover event uh, using a sniffer capture. So I'm gonna start my traffic, um, but before I do, I just wanna introduce the two APs here. One's my green AP, which is my PAL6B underscore five here, and PAL6C underscore five is my orange AP. 
So this guy is AP1 and this guy is AP2. You see statistics coming from both of them, control traffic coming from both of them. So I'm gonna start the test. So there's your traffic uh, coming from the phone to the AP. And you can see statistics coming from AP1, which is your orange AP here. So the phone is right now connected to AP1. You can look at the status and see the, the associated devices to the phone. I'm gonna introduce some attenuation in the link using the attenuators, and I'm gonna disconnect the phone from the AP that it's connected to. Um, I'm also gonna start my sniffer here. And um, I'm going to decrease the attenuation on the second AP. So you see that now your traffic's coming from the green AP. And then in the, in the sniffer captures, um, things are now, traffic is now coming from PAL6B, which is my green device here. Um, now, because of uh, the precision time protocol that we have, everything's time synced in the system. And uh, we see the sniffer captures, uh, uh, the packets coming in the sniffer aligned in time. So now I'm gonna roam back between PAL6B and uh, PAL6C. So I'm just going to kill the link here. And I'm going to open up the link here. So now you can see um, that things are coming back up on the orange guy. And you see all the control messages going to PAL6C, which is my orange AP. And then you also start to see traffic pick back up on PAL6C. Some interesting adaptation behavior here when we disconnect and connect back to a new AP. But you can also see that we almost disconnected for about 20 seconds. And because Multipurp has that out of band management network, we're able to ping the link and start traffic back up. IPERF3 usually stops after 10 seconds and does not pick traffic back up. This is a new feature of Multipurp. Thank you, Nandini, again. So uh, let's move on to traffic emulation and bridging. As you guys know, in testing, we, we most often use emulated traffic flows. Essentially, we use applications that emulate the behavior of other applications. We do this mostly out of convenience. Um, it, these tools are quite good. You know, they do a pretty decent job of, um, of, of traffic emulation. Of course, they, they oftentimes um, integrate statistics reporting that the application itself might not have. Um, now, this approach has its limitations. I mean, there are applications that are just either so new, that they haven't yet been emulated or, or they're just very difficult to, to emulate. Let's say a game, for example, uh, where the traffic flow generated by a game might be dependent on the human playing that game. And so emulating that would involve emulating a human being. And that could be, that could be complicated, right? Uh, but, you know, sometimes we just, um, you know, these, these, uh, these traffic generators, they, they give you a bunch of technical metrics. You know, in the case of video, it might be drop frames and blocking or what have you. And sometimes we just want to see the end result, right? Um, and not rely on these metrics themselves. And, um, and so for that, you need uh, bridging. Now, here's an example of, of how to do that in an Octobox test. And here we have, here on the lower left-hand corner, we have a, a smart TV, and it's uh, uh, watching uh, content from Netflix uh, from the internet. So we're using a real device, a real application, and real content, but we're still emulating the RF uh, and the Wi-Fi aspects of this connection. So we're doing things like emulating distance, multipath, we can be generating interference, congestion, 
you know, things that happen on the Wi-Fi layer. But we're doing it with the real devices so we can actually watch the video um, uh, as uh, the emulation is happening. Uh, happening. And of course, we're, uh, we're getting all these KPIs as well that we, uh, we already discussed, even though these are um, non-octoscope um, uh, test instruments. Um, and of course, as we already mentioned, uh, the PAL test instruments are really everywhere uh, in the test bed. So the test bed is quite flexible to allow this uh, uh, application bridging. Um, the PAL-6 device is supported today. The StayPAL test instruments, this feature is new. And so you'd likely have to uh, buy a new version that has these Ethernet uh, ports that, that are required for the bridging. Next, uh, I'll hand it over to Steve Shearer. Uh, he'll be discussing some of the details uh, of the multi-perf traffic generator, as well as he's going to do a, a wrap up for us for this session. Steve, uh, go ahead. Thank you, Johnny. So multi-perf now has uh, endpoints for pretty much all the key uh, devices that we see in the, in the Wi-Fi arena. So we do iOS, we do Linux, uh, we do Windows, we have Android, as you've seen in uh, Nandini's uh, demo. And what this means is that we can set up things like open air testing with, with loads and loads of, uh, of consumer devices. So this image gives, uh, gives an idea of what some of that testing uh, might, might look like. So the important thing is that we have the, the out-of-band management, which means that we can introduce disconnections. And when we introduce a disconnection, we do not have to run over to every single machine and restart the traffic generator. That is, that is done for us. That out-of-band management also uh, collects the statistics that are produced by the multi-perf endpoints, and it gives us the real-time plots, as you've seen as well. So we can do this in a combination of open air. We can do it in a test bed, uh, obviously, but we can do combinations of that as well. So we could, you could imagine running portions of a test in a test bed, uh, coupled somehow to an open air uh, testing environment. It makes it makes it very versatile indeed. Just um, reminding that all of these guys are synchronized. So that allows us to align those statistics so we can display them. It also allows us to align any sniffer captures that we may have. So in a room like this, we, we may want to put three or four or perhaps even five sniffer probes. Um, we want to make sure they're synchronized so that we can, you know, combine their output. And the synchronization also um, allows you to, to measure one, one way delay, which I think was uh, one, 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 of the, uh, one of the earlier questions. So, so let's, let's take a, a quick look at some of the other Steve, features. Steve, maybe maybe I can interject here uh, before you go to the next slide. There's a there's a live question here from Kuirong. He's asking on slide 19. The question is, how does the TV actually connect to the state? So the connection is provided through Ethernet. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the PAL six uh, instruments already have Ethernet connectors, and and uh, with the state PAL, this is a relatively uh, new feature. Uh, but that's how it's uh, uh, it's done. So, a uh, very good question, and 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 it is a new feature, specifically because we find customers want to do exactly uh, exactly this this type of stuff that uh, that Yanni was showing you. Multiperf offers a very comprehensive set of features. If you if you uh, sort of make a comparison with Things like iPerf2 and iPerf3, uh, they, they cover some of the bases. Uh, we, we leverage that and we provide full coverage. So you'll see some interesting new things 
planned on the roadmap, like uh, isochronous uh, traffic. We've talked about measuring one-way delay. We can actually produce um, histograms of one-way delay, uh, which is very useful in, in analyzing um, a delay performance. I think the most, potentially the most important aspect though, is this aspect of MultiPerf that does all of this statistics reporting. So we've touched on, on the management um, network, which is the network that synchronizes all of the devices, controls all of the devices, and collects all of the statistics back into, into the server. The great thing about that, is, as Yanni mentioned, is, is you don't impact uh, the traffic network. And there's, there's a third network which we use for basically visualization. So the management network collects these statistics. The server will uh, collate them into graphics and other uh, forms. And you can then browse into that from, uh, from a laptop or a PC without, without ever actually affecting the, uh, the traffic on on the traffic network. Um, the other thing that I would like to point out is that MultiPerf, we provide a Python API into it. So you can use MultiPerf in an interactive mode as we've seen today, but you can also uh, write Python scripts around that. And that makes automation a very straightforward to implement and a very powerful way of performing testing. So just in summary, we've talked about traffic generation. We've talked about the point that these days, Wi-Fi networks are generally multi-point to multi-point. So you need a traffic generator that can handle that. One-way delay measurements are starting to become more important in the industry. Uh, and there are various ways to look at the results of those one-way delay measurements. That's supported by, uh, by MultiPerf. We have iPerf2 and iPerf3 interoperability. So if you have um, some OS where we haven't ported MultiPerf2, there's probably an iPerf2 or 3 available for that, and you can, you can use that in, in the interim. I think we provide the most complete set of statistics and, and metrics, ranging from, as you've seen, the, the common or garden throughput curves, but through MCS, through RSSI, and even some very detailed chipset level uh, metrics as well. We've spoken about out-of-band management and how important that is. I think uh, the, uh, the point of, the, of being able to recover from link disconnections. Uh, we've touched on several times. It's actually a very important aspect uh, as, as, as you'll find out if you use a traffic generator that cannot recover. I just think of the, uh, the open air testing uh, slide that, that we looked at a little earlier. All of our stuff is synchronized. That enables you know, a number of of measurements, it enables orderly data collection and so on. And there's now the ability to bridge traffic for video, for audio, and frankly, many other application um, layer metrics. So with that, I hope that you found this interesting. Uh, just to remind everybody that we do record these uh, sessions. They're available on YouTube and as well as on our website. Here's all the links to the previous one. Just thank you, everybody, uh, for attending. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Nandini. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.